Good morning, I'm John Manier, developer of the AccuSlice system. On our main AccuSlice page, there's five videos describing the AccuSlice system, its installation, and its operation. This video will provide some additional details to give you improved results with the operation of your AccuSlice system in your bandsaw. I'll begin with this, some discussion on bandsaw blades. I tend to go through quite a few blades. I change my blades pretty frequently. As soon as I see the blade starting to gum up, I start seeing additional resistance as I'm pushing the board through the bandsaw blade. My sawdust coming off the board I'm cutting is darker than the wood that I'm cutting, or I'm seeing smoke coming from the kerf as it's cutting through the board. Those are all indications your bandsaw blade is getting dull. So I tend to change my blades pretty frequently or I can clean them uh, in, in many cases. I typically use half inch wide blades for ripping boards. I, I will use three quarter inch wide blades for cross cutting such as making my wedges. But on ripping boards, I prefer half inch wide blades and usually between six and eight teeth per inch. Now the number of teeth per inch really determines the type of wood I'm cutting and the thickness of boards I'm cutting. When I'm cutting boards less than say an inch and a half thick, I'll probably use 10 teeth per inches. Anything from like two inches to maybe four inches, I'd probably use uh, eight teeth per inch. Anything over four inches, I'd probably go six teeth per inches. And then anything over probably uh, eight to 10 inches, I'd probably go to four or six teeth per inch. Also, it depends on the type of wood you're cutting. When you're cutting wood that's you know, very uh, dry and not very gummy, you can use more teeth per inch. When you're cutting gummy woods, such as paduk or rosewood, then you may want to go a coarser blade because they gum out the blade quick, quicker. You're always compromising smoothness to cut versus gumming up the blade. The more teeth per inch, the smoother the cut, but the more teeth per inch, the faster the blade gums up. I also prefer half inch wide blades for slicing my boards. The kerf on a half inch wide blade is around 45 thousandths. For a three quarter inch wide blade, the kerf is about 55 thousandths. So you lose more wood cutting with the three quarter inch wide blades. Now normally when you're using a fence for ripping boards, You'd want a wider blade to get the uh, straighter cuts, but with the AccuSlice system, you can use narrow blades to get nice straight cuts. So I prefer the half inch wide blades, and I said most of my cutting I'm using between 8 and 10 teeth per inches. There's two schools of thought on the position of the bandsaw blade on the wheels on your bandsaw. Some people prefer to have the blade centered in the wheels. Other people prefer to have the gullet of the blade centered on the wheel. My preference is to have the bandsaw blade centered on the wheel. And I do this for what I consider to be an obvious reason. When the blade is centered on the wheel, you have even tension across the entire blade. If you have the skull of the blade centered in your wheel, this back edge of the blade doesn't have as much support and I think you get some wobble. Uh, so my preference has always been to center the blade on the uh, wheel, on the bandsaw. Also by putting, if you put that uh, bandsaw blade in the center with a gullet in the center, you're going to get a lot of chew, uh, chewing or tearing up of the wheels on your bandsaw blade. So I, I imagine these uh, purple wheels wouldn't last as long if you center the gullet of the blade on the wheels. So I said my preference is to center the blade on the wheel. Other people have different opinions and you're, you're welcome to your opinion, but my preference has always been to center the blade in the center of the wheel. The next thing is very important is the bandsaw blade uh, guides. I'm not that critical on the, the sides, although I normally use the uh, ceramic blade guides where the ceramic push right against the side of the blade. But what's really important is the back edge of the blade. This back edge blade, whether it's a ceramic disc or a roller, should be flat against the back edge of the blade. If there's a gap between that back uh, spacer and the back roller or your back uh, ceramic against that blade, when you start pushing the board into the bandsaw blade, the blade will move. And when the blade moves backwards, it can also twist. So it's very important that that back uh, roller or ceramic disc be flat against the bandsaw blade, both top and bottom. So when I push this blade, you know, there's no movement either on the bottom or the top. Also, I try and keep my guides as low as possible, it, really just for safety. But when I'm doing that, both that back ceramic and the bottom ceramic are flat against that blade, so there's no movement of that blade as I'm pushing the board through the bandsaw blade. When the blade does gum up, you can clean it. And what I typically do is I take a rag with some WD-40 and just 
wipe the blade, pushing it through and cleaning it up. And that can get you some additional life out of your bandsaw blade. But if it starts gumming up, it'll start smoking. You want to either clean that up or replace the bandsaw blade. One other thought when you're changing the bandsaw blades, always clean your wheels. I usually use either uh, a coarse steel wall or some like a 100 grit sandpaper to clean my wheels. Additional sawdust, you know, build up and embed it in those wheels can cause additional vibration of your bandsaw. So you want to clean those wheels every time you change your bandsaw blade. My preference is not to use the carbide tooth blades for a number of reasons. I, I try the carbide tooth blades and they tend to give a rougher cut. I get smoother cuts using an 8 or 10 teeth per inch blade on my bandsaw. The other reason I don't like the carbide blades is the kerf is wider. And with a wider kerf, you lose more wood. So I prefer to go with the, you know, standard rake tooth or design blades with a thinner kerf. Now when you're cutting some very hard woods, woods that are very dense or woods that are very gummy, there may be an application for carbide tooth blades, but I typically don't use them. One of the final details on your blade is the blade must be perfectly parallel to your miter bar. If you're, as you're pushing a board through the bandsaw, and I've shown this in some previous videos, as you're pushing a board through the bandsaw blade, the teeth on the blade create a kerf. And that kerf is wider than your blade. So as you're pushing that board through the bandsaw blade, you have these teeth creating a wide kerf, and the back edge of the blade should never touch the wood. If that back edge of the blade is touching the wood, it means your blade is not parallel to your miter bar slot. Here's a short video showing the gap on both sides of the bandsaw blade of a board I'm cutting. Here's a gap on the left side. This is the back edge view of the blade. There's a gap on the left side, and there's also a gap on the right side. So that back edge of the blade is not touching the board at all. It's perfectly centered. And what can happen is if that uh, back edge of the blade is touching the wood, it'll cause something to move. Either the blade's going to move, or the board's going to move. Now since the board's attached to a carriage on the AccuSize system, the board's not going to move. But the blade can twist and move. So it's very important that that back edge of this blade never touch the sides of the curve created by the bandsaw blade. And I've shown that in some previous videos and I'll show it again. If you're cutting a board and you notice this back edge of the blade is touching the wood on either the left or right side, then it's necessary to adjust the table on your bandsaw. And this is done by adjusting what's called a trunnion plate on your bandsaw. And there should be instructions in your manual for your bandsaw on how to do that. But typically I need to turn my table, you know, tilt my table slightly, get underneath and there's usually four or six bolts to hold that plate to the main chassis for your bandsaw. In other words, that plate attaches the main chassis of your bandsaw to this table. So you need to loosen those bolts, and then you twist the table either left or right to adjust for the parallelism of your bandsaw blade. Actually, you're actually adjusting the table, not the bandsaw blade. Uh, and it's a trial and error process. It takes quite a while. There should be instructions in your manual on your bandsaw on how to do that. Uh, it is uh, very tedious and, and time consuming to do because you have to lust, adjust those or loosen those bolts, move the table ever so slightly, retighten them, do another cut, maybe better or maybe worse, go back, do it again and keep doing that till you tweak it in. Uh, but once you get that tweaked in, your system should be perfectly parallel to your miter bar slot and you should have no uh, touching of this bandsaw blade back edge on your wood. It should be perfectly centered in the curve of your cut. Now this is an example of a blade that's gum up and I've been using it quite a bit. And I was cutting some paduk, so it did gum up the blade. So the blade isn't that old, but it did gum up. But you can save these blades just by cleaning them. Now I usually clean them with a, a rag and some WD-40. And I would just, you know, soak the rag with the WD-40. And then wipe the blade. And that cleans it up. You can just see the area here where I just cleaned up real quickly. That can clean the blade up so you can get it back to using it again. So that concludes these details on the bandsaw blades. Uh, I said I go through a lot of bandsaw blades. I change them pretty frequently because I just find that a, a new, clean, sharp blade gives much, much better cuts. The boards go through the bandsaw blades are much smoother. I don't get any uh, burning or shadowing uh, on the boards I'm cutting. And it just everything runs much faster and smoother and cleaner. Some additional details on installing the AccuSlice system on the bandsaw. The system mounts on the bandsaw by just mounting this in the miter bar slot on your bandsaw. 
Now when you're installing this, these offset cams tighten the miter bar against the slot in your bandsaw table. But it's important you don't over tighten these offset cams. Finger tight is all you need. Because you're not holding this from coming up or anything, you're just holding it against that front edge of the miter bar slot. So just a light finger touch is all you need. If you over tighten these too much, you can damage these offset cams and you need to replace the entire miter bar in your system. So don't over tighten these offset cams on your bandsaw system. Now the other thing people notice is there's a little bit of wobble in these linear bearings on the AccuSlice system. This is normal. It's not at all critical in this back plate because this is just a positioning system to give you an anchor point to move your table back and forth. But you get a little bit of wobble in your table. That's nothing to be worried about or concerned about because you're doing all your indexing from here. You don't want to be changing that as you're you know, moving your board. You just every time just use your index wheel to position your table. The other thing you want to make sure that your uh, front edge of your table is parallel to your miter bar. Uh, when, it, when it's shipped from the factory, they should be right on, but it can get off a little maybe in shipping or maybe mishandling or, or dropping your system or jarring it. And those can be readjusted. Uh, there's, a, there's a video on you know adjusting your system. Uh, in the on the website, and that's just done by uh, loosening these uh, bolts. And what I usually do is I uh, loosen these bolts. I may put a clamp to clamp the table to the uh, miter bar, and then clamp it, adjust it as you need it, and then retighten these screws. It's pretty easy to do if you need to do it. The other thing when using the indexing wheel is be aware of backlash. You always want to index it going clockwise. You know if you overshoot your your position by maybe one or two thousand. You don't just want to back it up. If you want to, if you want to back it up, I'd back it up an entire full turn and then move it back to the original position. Because you get can get some backlash in this if you're just moving it backwards. You know, one or two thousands. So if you're going to reverse it, take it back a full turn and then take it forward again. And that should eliminate the backlash. We have mag jigs clamps on the system, and the purpose of the mag jig clamps is just to to anchor the uh, front plate on the uh, AccuSlice system to your bandsaw table and just reduces vibration gives you smoother cuts. And we've actually had one customer actually put double uh, uh, mag jig clamps on his system to give him additional support. Uh, I've never done that but uh, people have done that and they claim to get better uh, reduction, reduction, reduction of vibration of your system by clamping those in place. So one is thing is all you need but if you want to add two we do have additional clamps and plates and everything available to do that. Next is the rail. If you're using a three foot rail, you don't need any additional support, maybe even a four foot rail. But anything over five feet, you want to support the ends of your rail because this rail, these rails will vibrate. And since they're so far out from the edge of the bandsaw table, the further out, the more vibration you're going to get. So to reduce that vibration and also to eliminate sagging of this rail, I recommend supporting this rail with something. In this case, I made some support tables. You could also use these roller stands or anything like that. Anything to give you some additional support to eliminate the sagging and vibration of the rail. I did mention the table extensions. I use table extensions because of a long rail. But I also have these table extensions on the front of my bandsaw. In this case they're about, uh, about five inches wide. So this is a piece of angle iron. It's like five by three. And I, I smooth off the surface, give you a nice smooth surface, and they're level with the top of my bandsaw blade. Now, I like these extension tables. They give me additional support for my AccuSlice system. But more than that, you know, I made them out of uh, uh, iron because they need to be magnetic. So my mag jigs will clamp on here for slicing wider boards. But that gives me additional support. You know, when you're mounting the AccuSlice system, you do have quite a bit of metal out here to give you some additional weight especially when it's hanging far out like this. So those plates come all the way out to here and give me some additional support. Especially when I'm installing a system you know, and just locking it in place. Next are the carriages on the bandsaw. It's very important that these roller bearings be cleaned periodically. You can get sawdust build up on these roller bearings. These are a polycarbonate wheel. There's a stainless steel ball bearing in the center to give you a nice smooth rotation of those wheels. But if you get sawdust embedded in this plastic, it can actually damage the plastic. And if it gets extreme, it actually can crack the 
polycarbonate wheels. So usually after every, you know, 10 or 12 cuts, I pull the uh, carriage off my bandsaw and just the cloth, just wipe the sawdust off these wheels. And then also then run a, a cloth down this, especially this front edge of the groove on your rail, just to clean out the excess sawdust. And you'll, and you'll see the difference as you're cutting your boards. If you start seeing a lot of resistance as you're pushing that board through the bandsaw blade, it's because these roller bearings have built up sawdust. So pull the carriage off, clean your channel on your rail, and you'll be surprised how much smoother it'll run. But as you're cutting, if you start feeling this like, jerking motion as you're doing it, it's because there's sawdust has built up in those bearings. I've tended to go to these new, we call these the AccuSled uh, 2 carriages. We have an 18 inch model and a 30 inch model. And I prefer these over our other carriages just because they're more versatile. I can use flat plate clamps. I can use, you know, three inch L brackets, four inch L brackets, six inch L brackets. Depends on the type of wood I'm cutting. So I find it just to be much more versatile than our other carriages. So I've pretty much gone to these exclusively for most of my work. This is the 30 inch model of that same uh, carriage. Again, we're using the flat plate clamps to clamp a shallow board. And it is important that when you're cutting a board, that your board be totally supported the entire length with a sacrificial fence. If you don't support the end of the board, especially on the front edge, when you start getting a cut, you'll get vibration. And that vibration will give you a, an inaccurate cut. So you always want your board supported by a sacrificial fence. And especially on taller boards, make sure you, you support the entire height of the board. Now attaching the boards to the sacrificial fence, in some of the earlier videos I used double-sided tape. And a double-sided tape works good for small boards, something, you know, 6 to 10 inches long. But what I found out when I was cutting longer boards, you know, the board may be straight when you're cutting it. But as you start cutting it, you know, you start building up heat in the wood, you're changing the dimensions of the wood, and that wood will actually start warping. And so what I found was happening is when I was cutting long boards, it worked fine for the first couple cuts, but then the board started pulling away from the uh, sacrificial fence. So I've now gone to using a glue, usually type on uh, three glue uh, to glue my boards to the sacrificial fence. Some people have used uh, uh, like uh, these, uh, this blue painter's tape, put tape on your board, put tape on your sacrificial fence, and then use CA glue to clamp the two together. And that makes it much easier to get the board off your uh, sacrificial fence. So both those techniques I've used uh, quite a bit. Uh, but I prefer in most cases to actually glue the board to the sacrificial fence. That way nothing moves. And I'll show a board I'll, I cut, I'll be cutting a little bit later. The board was actually warped quite a bit. I glued it to the sacrificial fence. I'll run it through here and I'll get nice clean cuts. And I don't have to worry about it popping off the uh, sacrificial fence. The other thing I do is I try and adjust my board that it just rides on the table of the bandsaw blade. By riding on the table, you reduce vibration and just gives you much smoother cuts. If you would raise it up a little bit, you know, you have a chance to get any more vibration in your system. So I prefer to just ride on table, but not bind. So it's kind of a critical dimension work. It's against the table that it slides fairly smoothly, but it doesn't bind as you're cutting. Final thought when cutting is cut slowly. The slower you cut, the smoother the cut. I did a video on the automated AccuSlice system in which I was slicing boards at 10 inches per minute, which is really slow, but I was getting beautiful cuts on the bandsaw. But that's pretty hard to cut that slow. I mean, you're, you're cutting really, really slow. Uh, so when I'm doing manually, I'm probably cutting like 30 inches per minute. Uh, and I get decent cuts, but if, the slower you cut, the smoother the cut. As I mentioned before, the, the more teeth per inch, the smoother the cut, and the slower you cut, the smoother the cut. So I can get cuts off this system that are very smooth. Uh, not quite as smooth as a, as a table saw, but uh, smooth enough to give you a good gluing surface. I don't normally run my boards to a board sander or planer to get them smooth because the cuts come off here nice and clean. Okay, I'm ready to cut this piece of purple heart. This uh, purple heart's about uh, two inches wide and about 36 inches long. And it's about a half an inch thick because I cut some pieces off here previously. But let me go and cut a piece off. And I usually cut a sacrificial piece off to, to give me a flat parallel surface. And I'll cut some thin boards to see how accurate the system is. So I zeroed my gauge, I turned it counterclockwise, and then turn it clockwise to zero to give me a starting point. So what I normally do is, using my thumbs, make sure my mag jigs are open, make sure these 
course adjustment knobs are open. Push the board until it just touches the bandsaw blade. And then lock the course adjustment knobs in place. Turn the board back. And then lock these course adjustment knobs. Make sure your mag jigs are open. And then I know my blade is about 45,000 inch kerf. One revolution of this wheel is uh, 50 thousandths, basically the, the thickness of the kerf of the blade. So I turn it one full turn. That's for the course, the kerf of the blade. And then let's do another uh, turn just to give me a, a first cut. So my mag jigs are locked. My blade guys are locked. My board slides smoothly on the rail. So now we're ready to start cutting. So that was just a piece of scrap to give me a flat surface. So let's go and cut another board now. I open my mag jigs. I do one full turn for the curve of the blade. And let's do a board 50 thousandths of an inch thick. I sped this up 20 times the actual cutting speed to reduce viewing times, but the sound went away in the process. Okay, here's this 36 inch long piece of Purple Heart. And let's measure it. So I got 51 thousandths. 50 thousandths, 52 thousandths, 51 thousandths, 52 thousandths. And the same the other side, 52 thousandths, 51 and a half thousandths, 52 thousandths. So a nice straight, parallel, edge to edge, top to bottom. What I like about these AccuSled 2 systems is its versatility. I just took out those flat plate clamps that I used to clamp that previous board. And now I'll be putting these L brackets on the system. Uh, because I'll be cutting this wider board. This board's about 4 inches wide. I think it's about uh, 30 inches long. And this board was severely warped. When I put this on the system, I had to do some clamping to get it to, uh, to glue up. So it is severely warped. But now it's securely held against this sacrificial fence, so it should give some decent cuts. Now these uh, l bracket clamps, you just slide these uh, keys into the uh, slot, and then screw the clamp down into those keys. And in the same manner, I add the other l bracket clamps. Now I got to mount uh, my sacrificial fence to these brackets using some wood screws, actually panel screws, and I just push the board. Now I like to have the system where it rides on the table but doesn't bind. I don't want to push this down, just slightly hold it in place, and I'll push it down. slides freely. I'm going to go down here and attach another one at this end. And I do try to pre-drill my holes so it's much easier to screw in place. Same process, Let me zero my gauge, set it to zero, push my board against the bandsaw blade, tighten it, move it back, make sure these are open, one full turn for the curve of the blade, one full turn to give me a scrap piece of wood. So this first cut is just to give me a flat parallel surface because this board is warped quite a bit. And that board had quite a bit of warp in it, and I can see this piece of scrap coming off. It's very thick, it's very thin up here, it's very thick, you know, in the middle here, and then thin down the end again. So it, it definitely was warped, and actually thicker in the bottom and the top. So it's quite a bit of a, out of parallel. But now my cut is perfectly flat and straight, so this next board should be perfectly straight and flat. So you make sure these are still tight. 
Loosen my mag jigs. One turn for the curve of the blade. And let's do another full turn and give me a, a 50 thousandths inch thick piece of wood. So here's that board fresh off the bandsaw. I said this was a, a pretty severely warped board that I put on here. So let's see what we have here. I got 50 thousandths, 50 thousandths, 51 thousandths, 15 and a half thousandths. Going to the bottom. I gotta watch these fuzzies can get in the way. That's 52 thousandths, 51 thousandths, 51 thousandths, 51 thousandths. So again, perfectly straight, parallel, edge to edge, top to bottom. And that was from a severely work board. I can cut some more, I can cut some thinner pieces off the same board to show that we get much, much thinner pieces. So let's open my mag jigs. One full turn for the curve of the blade. And let's cut it in half. Let's go to 25 thousandths. And that board measures 25 plus or minus the thousands of an inch all the way around. We'll cut one more. Let's try and cut a board down to 10 thousandths of an inch thick. A revolution of the curve of the blade. And then five ten thousandths. And that board measured between 10 and 12 thousandths of an inch thick. So it's 11 thousandths plus or minus a thousandths of an inch all the way around. And that's pretty thin. This concludes this video with some additional tips on the operation of the AccuSlice system and your bandsaw. I hope you found the uh, tips included in this video instructive. There's some additional tips on our website on the main AccuSlice uh, homepage. Uh, there's five videos there to describe the, the description of the system, the installation, the operation, and even a video on how to attach uh, woods to your sacrificial fences. So I hope you found this video instructional and helpful. If you have any additional questions or concerns, you know, please give us a call or drop us an email. And once again, thank you for watching this video.